So today I'm going to be doing something pretty interesting. I'm going to be looking at one of my old brass quartet works uh, that I actually composed last year and won an award for, and I'm going to be critiquing it, reacting to you know the score and the audio and what I would have done differently or things I've learned since then, and hopefully giving you some advice for writing brass music if you are not a brass player, which I'm not either. Um, so yeah, this should be pretty educational, I think, and I hope you enjoy it. So the group that performed this as well as hosted the competition is called the Diversity Initiative, and they try to promote music of more underrepresented composers, and uh, I think they, they, do, they have a really good mission, and I was really um, honored to be a part of that. Uh, if you guys don't know, I'm half Filipino, uh, Asian American, so that's kind of where I fit in with this diversity um, part of this. So. Uh, yeah, so I won an award for this, for this competition last summer, and they performed this work um, just uh, late last fall, so let's give it a listen. I'm always a fan of the intro, I always love it. Here comes the trumpet. And they play it so sweetly and expressively. I love it. Just what I wanted. Nice job, horn. That octave jump. Pretty tricky. And if you notice, uh, some of you might notice that there's no tuba in this. It's actually bass trombone because the tubist, tuba, tuba player, whatever, uh, got COVID the day before this, so unfortunate. Amazing arrival. A little duet there. I'm just always a sucker for slower pieces. I just love the uh, lyrical quality you can give to it. And of course, this is a more tonal setting, but anyways. Moving to a new pastoral section. You know, one thing I would change is everyone's playing all of the time. I, I wish I could have given uh, more space or just more time for players to rest. Because it's a little bit of a thick texture right now. Like, more polyphonic. Which means there's multiple things happening. Yeah, I like soloing out the vo one voice there at these climactic points. And everyone comes in on, like, B2. and trumpet's gonna go down an octave. It was a little high. Which I'm fine with. Back up. We're slowing down a little bit. Going into a new section. Horn solo. Oh my god, love it. Little DS Ray quote, if you know what I mean. So we went from a slow tempo to an even slower tempo, so you know you know how much I love that. Oh my gosh. Amazing. A little quieter. Tuba is going to lead us in to the new section. Or bass trombone. So there's just a lot of themes here. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I could have been a little more clever with the themes I already had. Because I'm just reintroducing a lot, but... I like how they trade off. The trumpet and trombone.
trading off again to the horn, to the trombone. Another big point. Yeah, again, everyone is playing all the time. It really should give some players some time to rest and to thin it out a little bit. I love having the horn do the the eighth note little thing there. It's very idiomatic. Back to the main theme. The trombone and horn. Trumpets doing this descant line, very beautiful. The solo. And then tuba is our, our foundation. Here we go. Down the octave. Nice. Big point. Amazing. We're bringing it back down, a little more reserved. We're building back up. Nice trumbo. Back to the main theme. We're trading off the melody again. A little harmonizing right here. Amazing. But yeah, that I love the piece. It was performed beautifully by the players. Um, and for the first time writing a brass-like piece, um, being like a woodwind player and a pianist, I don't really know. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing too much. Um, but writing like band and orchestral works kind of helped me with my brass writing, and, I, and that's kind of what helped me with the chamber setting. Um, so my skills kind of crossed over there. But at the same time, um, I, I think I made a few errors. Not errors, just things I would change. Um, First things first with the score itself. So when you write chamber music, um, you want to make sure that uh, when you write it on sheet music, you probably want more uh, a smaller staff size so that there can be around three systems per page. If you're we're talking about like a regular uh, letter sized uh, eight and a half by eleven inch paper, or I guess A4 is the international standard. Um, usually three systems per staff uh, per per page. I mean. That just makes it look a little more professional. Like my staff size is way too big. There's only two systems per page. And that just kind of is, I think that was just a default with Sibelius. So you definitely want to decrease your staff size to, so you can fit three uh, systems. Um, and there were some, uh, I was looking at uh, like slur markings. So slurs for like brass and wind um, has to do with tonguing usually. And they're not really phrase markings, which I kind of treated them here as. Uh, so my slurs, I think, were going on for a little too long. Like they need to rearticulate and retongue things, um, especially when you we switch regis registers from like a low to high note. Um, just be aware of you know you can't just like throw a slur mark on anything and expect you to be all legato. And I, I talked about some textural things too. Um, I wanted there to be less um, like like thick textures in some places because that's the entire piece was pretty much all four voices doing some like polyphonic. Um, texture and what I've learned recently is that you want to make sure you can um, thin some things out and that's how you get that contrast and having everyone play it all at the same time doing different things uh, it can be a little too busy especially for like I don't even know how long this was maybe like I think like an eight minute piece um, so maybe some points you can have only two players go and they could do like a duet or something or even like a solo line for a little while and that allow you to have the contrast from this full texture to uh, almost nothing and that, that, that contrast is what makes the pie pieces really interesting and I did talk a little bit about like thematic material so I think since this was written last summer that's kind of where I was still figuring figuring out how to compose a little bit um, uh, I, I introduced so many themes so many ideas and I never really expand upon them I kind of just move on to the next and that was that's pretty much one of my greatest weaknesses I always love thinking of brand new ideas and themes and melodies, um, but you have to learn to kind of develop what you have and then stick to it. So at 39, I introduced this Dies Irae theme, which is 
been used for hundreds of years. Uh, it just signifies death in some ways. Uh, I kind of just trade that off um, with the voices. Uh, that's a fine theme. I mean, I maybe could have disguised it a little more. It's a little. It's kind of obvious that I use it if you know what it, if you know what it is. But um, that that I could have kept that and maybe the beginning theme, which is just the like the rolling uh, eighth notes. It goes like. This is not transposed, I'll do it in the trombone. So there's like a melody in the beginning that I could have explored more. Maybe slowed it down, maybe um, took just some fragments of it, just to develop the theme instead of introducing so many different themes in the song. But other than that, like, I haven't changed too much in my writing. Like, I, I do, I, I, I really do enjoy this piece. Um, it, maybe it's a little too tonal for my liking now. Um, but, you know, I think this is almost like an ode to the past in some ways. Um, it's like very, like Ralph Vaughan Williams, very pastoral, very, uh, um, you know, of like the, the 20th century maybe, or even earlier. Uh, so yeah, I don't have to say much more, uh, but you do want to, uh, again, ranges um, are really important. So the tessitura of the instrument is kind of their comfortable range, and you should get to learn that for, for the instruments, especially for brass music. So uh, high notes are very much more difficult, I'd say, um, and low notes can be difficult too, um, especially for trumpet. Um, but uh, yeah, watch the ranges, like middle, the mid, their middle ranges, uh, you can exploit a lot of, when you need like climactic points, you can go up to the higher register, but just work up to it. Don't just make them blast, like make a trumpet blast, like a high C out of the blue, because that would be completely, that'd be crazy, um, unless you're like a jazz player, but um, yeah, build up to it, uh, make sure you're writing idiomatically, per usual. Um, and that comes with a lot of score studying, a lot of practice writing, and even talking to uh, brass players if you can about you know what's comfortable for them. Maybe they can um, proofread some of the writing you make for brass, and over time you'll just improve a lot more. Um, so yeah, I hope this was informative a little bit and kind of gets you interested in writing different types of music that you're not used to. And if you're interested in checking out the Diversity Initiative, they might have another call for scores this year, and you can submit your brass work. They had like a trio, duets, brass, quintets, and septets, um, and I just chose the quartet. And uh, I think I wrote this in just like under a week because I, I try to submit to multiple categories, but this is the one that uh, won like second place, I believe, um, as a runner-up board. So yeah, if you enjoyed it, and you want to try it yourself, go ahead and check the link in the description. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to know how I wrote a string quartet work, which is kind of similar but very different writing techniques for that, then go ahead and check my vlog up down below. Um, it's very, very interesting and it goes through the entire journey from writing and drafting to the actual recording performance of it. So if you're interested in how I did that during music school and stuff last semester, and go ahead and check that out. Um, but anyways, thanks so much for watching and keep writing.